So I'm going to talk about Fast Global Illumination again. This is an update to a tutorial I just published about a couple of weeks ago on YouTube and that tutorial goes into a little bit more depth and breadth so if you don't know what fast global illumination is probably go watch that video in this video i'm going to do a lot more detailed discussion about the add mode of the fast global illumination feature in blender and the reason for this is i got challenged in the comments in the last video because in all of my testing i was not able to get a speed up while using add mode which is quite strange because fast global illumination is meant to be a faster lower quality replacement for full global illumination from the cycles engine so the fact that i was not getting a speed up using one of its two modes was a little bit weird and so i decided to act on that comment and go and redo a whole bunch of testing and that's what's in this video so let's go and check out what add mode is and what i found so first things first we're going to look at some numbers you may have remember from the last last video if you watched it that we were using exclusively the Italian flat scene this is no different I went back to using the Italian flat scene this time and I was also using the same version of blender although there may have been some changes to the render times probably due to driver changes with my graphics card not sure still investigating that one but regardless I was comparing using the same version of blender the same file the same computer when I was collecting all of this data so what I found was, once again, I could not, for the life of me, get any kind of meaningful speed up using add mode. What you can see here is all the test render data that I did, repeating much of the experiments I'd done in the first video, except focusing more on changing the parameters around the add mode. In Blender, if we just flip straight over to the settings, when you're in add mode, you can see that the only thing you can change is the AO factor and the distance. But you can also change the number of bounces you're using. So that is the primary thing that I varied for all of these results. And the results show that there really isn't a benefit to using add mode in any of the different cases. Because if I pick this one, which was 12 bounces, using full global illumination is faster. If I pick this one using six bounces, full global illumination is still faster and so on and so forth the story goes it is always better to use full global illumination than to use add mode at least with the settings that i have and the scene that i have and the hardware that i have if you want to do your own experiments and prove me wrong please do so and post your results somewhere that we can actually have a look at them and also post the settings that you have now talking about settings here are my settings so i'm using cycles gpu compute these are the bounce settings. This is the one number that I was varying, which is the total number of bounces. Fast Global Illumination was either on using add mode or off. I did one run using replace just to check. And that is the sum total of the investigation. So from what I can tell, add mode doesn't seem to really make much of a difference, but we're gonna look at some more results. So the first thing I wanted to do is get a baseline render. So here are the settings, here are the light paths, the bounces, Fast Global Illumination is off. And three, two, one. We get a time of 44 seconds and 460 thereabouts milliseconds. So the next thing I'm gonna do is use the replace mode with just two bounces. This is gonna make Blender render two bounces using full global illumination, and then it will use ambient occlusion for the rest of the render. So using replace in this way gives us a time of 37 seconds and around about 840 milliseconds, which is roughly a saving of seven seconds. Okay, right, now let's try add mode. Switching over to add mode, the first thing you'll notice is the menu for setting how many render bounces disappears. This is because add mode uses full global illumination and then adds ambient inclusion on top of that. So in effect, you're using two different methods to light the scene and then adding them together. So the first thing you're going to notice is compared to replace, which you can see here, add looks a lot brighter. If you compare it to full global illumination, the differences are quite minor. Now, as of Blender 4.3, which I'm using today, there is minimal color difference. If you were to go back and use 3.6, like I did in the original tutorial, you'll probably notice that when you use add mode, it does change the color quite a bit. When it comes to the render times, let's compare them. Okay, so full global illumination was 44 seconds or thereabouts. Replace was a bit quicker, 37 seconds. Using add is actually two seconds slower than using full global illumination. This is why I find add mode a little bit weird, because out of the box, if you just select add mode, it will not save you render time. So let's look at how we could use add to save some render time and give us a scene that looks a little bit better than this. So I'm setting up a new slot to render once more. This time we're gonna use add, but we're also gonna turn down the number of bounces to about two. We're going to turn diffuse bounces down to one. The idea here is to reduce the number of full global illumination bounces, which will get us a little bit of a time saving and add mode will hopefully add a bit more brightness so it doesn't look as dark. Now the result with one bounce is a little bit disappointing. 
If I compare it to full global illumination, which is this image, you can notice straight away that there's a number of pretty suboptimal differences. So for example, some of the background is a lot darker. The foreground doesn't seem to be too badly affected. You may be able to get away with just lifting it with a little bit of a brightness boost. The colors in the books and the chair don't seem to be too affected, but the real problem is these areas here and also here, which are just far, far too dark. Now we have got a little bit of a time saving. Over using just global illumination, we went from 44 seconds down to 39 seconds. So it's a modest time saving. Let's see if we can improve on the image though. So what I'm gonna to do to try and improve the image is I'm gonna use three bounces instead of two total, and I'm gonna leave all the other settings where they are. And let's see what that does. So with three bounces, the time saving is a little bit more modest. Looking at the render time for full global illumination, you can see that was 44 seconds or thereabouts. Using three bounces, time saving is now a little bit smaller. We rendered that scene in about 40 seconds. Compared that to when we use just two bounces, it's a little bit slower. Honestly, that could just be noise. The image though is a little bit better. These areas which were a lot dark when we were just using two bounces have now brightened up considerably. However, the scene is a lot darker when we compare it to full global illumination. It's a lot better than two, but it's still not at the same level. So even though we're adding ambient inclusion on top, it feels like we're not really adding enough. So can you actually get more contribution from fast global illumination to make the scene a little bit brighter? The answer is yes, but there are some significant drawbacks. So first of all, how do you do this? You'll notice that this slider sticks around one. However, you can just type in any value you like and Blender will accept it and then you can render with that. It doesn't seem to be a very linear scale. I had to crank it from one all the way up to five to get from this to this, which doesn't look to me like five times the brightness, but then again, my eye, eyes are not calibrated to do the math. Now I did mention there were some drawbacks, so let's go through those one by one. First of all, if we look at full global illumination, there are some artifacts from denoising in this scene. So for example, we can see there's a bit of a smudge on the wall, but they are much, much worse when we use fast global illumination and add mode. You can see there are crinkles up here, what look like wrinkles or crinkles. Uh, there are more smudges on the wall. So the visual quality, especially when you're using denoising, seems to drop. Uh, it's also similar to replace. Um, it's just replace is darker, so those artifacts can be a little bit harder to pick out, but they're definitely there. The big issue for me though, is that it's not actually faster. So if you look at the render time for the little trick I just did by extending the contribution from add mode from one to five, the render time is now 45 seconds versus 40. This is still add mode, it's just, I've used five times the contribution. So it seems that increasing that contribution number actually increases the amount of computation that's done. Now compare 45 seconds and the quality of this image to using full global illumination. And it's clear that this image is better. It's cleaner. It may not have as much contrast, but it doesn't have the issues with the noising artifacts and it's slightly quicker, although that speed difference may just be fluctuations from render to render. All of this makes me think I'm still struggling to see the point of add mode unless I'm using it wrong. And if you think I'm using it wrong, please do sound out in the comments below. But as it stands, I have done extensive testing and I have failed to get a speed up using this scene. Now it may be just that it is this scene. However, I don't think so. This scene is quite geometrically dense which means that ray tracing should find that a lot more difficult than an approximation algorithm like fast global illumination. It'd be interesting to see if I push the geometry even further to see if maybe add mode cranking the contribution up to five was actually quicker in some cases, but I haven't done that experiment yet. If you want me to do that experiment, I would be only too happy to, again, please drop a comment below and tell me if you want me to do that experiment. If add mode doesn't really help us out, is there anything else to learn about fast global illumination or ambient occlusion in Blender? Yes, there is one trick that I have discovered which may help you out. So here goes. Separate to fast global illumination, inside Blender, there is something called an ambient occlusion render pass. And here's how you get it. So in the compositor, so you go to the compositing tab, use nodes. Before you render, make sure you come into the passes tab, scroll down, you'll find ambient occlusion. You may have to expand the light section because it is closed usually by default. Once you've enabled ambient inclusion, it should appear in the list of passes on your render layers node. And then let's have a look at it. So if we exclusively look at ambient inclusion, this is what you get. Now, if you haven't seen the first video I did, a quick explainer for ambient occlusion and sorry for you very uh, knowledgeable people out there, I'm going to 
probably butcher this explanation a bit. Ambient inclusion works by shading areas where occlusion is likely. So between this cube and this plane, there's not a lot of space for light to get in there. Where objects tend to be close to each other, ambient occlusion will render those areas darker. And that's about as simple as it gets. So what I'm gonna try and do now is use that same ambient occlusion pass to do my own version of add mode and try and get something which looks as close as possible to full global illumination, but without the render time penalty. Okay, so this is our starting point. Remember this render does not have any fast global illumination applied to it at all. It had three bounces, one diffuse bounce, and then the other bounces distributed amongst glossy, indirect, all that other kind of stuff. It rendered a little bit quicker. It's about six seconds faster than full global illumination, but it is a lot darker. So the idea is to use ambient occlusion to get that back in Blender's compositor. So let's give that a crack. This is the compositing network. Most of this isn't actually mine. It came with the scene. The two additions I've made are to use multiply and add nodes, which I'll get onto why they're there in a second. I'm also using the ambient occlusion pass. And what we're actually looking at right now is the ambient occlusion pass. And the first thing you'll notice about it is it is very noisy and it's all in black and white. So if we were just to add this, well, actually let's do that. Let's just take this ambient occlusion pass. We'll take the denoise one because right now we're looking at uh, the noisy image. So you can use the denoising node to make it a little bit better. Why is it all white? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one, that's why. So if we denoise the pass, it looks a little bit better. So let's see what it looks like if we just take the ambient occlusion and add it straight to the image. Now the first thing you'll notice is the colors now look quite washed out and that's because we're literally just adding black and white on top of the original image. And the more we do that, the worse this washout gets. So we need to fix that. And the way that I fix that is I've got a multiply node. And this multiply node multiplies the denoise version of the base image with the denoise version of the ambient occlusion and that's what this looks like and this is what we're going to add back to the original image which instead of just adding white it adds more of the original color that was already there which means we can raise the brightness without washing out the color so i'm going to do that now i'm going to connect the output of the multiply node to where it should be and then we're going to preview what this looks like so there we have it we have now increased the brightness without washing out the color doing pretty much exactly what the add mode does except hopefully fingers crossed we're going to save some time so now i'm actually going to render the whole thing including the compositing just to make sure that it matches more or less the render time that we would get for using just three bounces and not using fast global illumination with the add mode so here's the final result so first let's look at it visually so this is the node network i created to simulate um, the add mode of fast global illumination. This is full global illumination. This is three bounces with one diffuse. This is 12 bounces with six diffuse and everything else as the scene is configured by default. So first of all, you'll notice like it is a lot brighter. The colors are more or less similar. It's just an increase in brightness. So we could actually tweak this in the compositor. We could use less of a contribution from the ambient occlusion and the render time is quicker. Now I do have to make a mention about the render time. You'll see global illumination is now 24 seconds as opposed to 44 seconds. And the ambient occlusion method with the node network is now 20 seconds. So we've saved ourselves about four seconds of render time doing it this way. So let's talk now about that render time. I'm not exactly sure how this happened. I don't consciously recall making any changes that caused this, but I noticed that instead of the render taking a long time to start, it started pretty much straight away. So there must have been some setting or some problem where my render was taking a long time to load and all of a sudden that problem just went away and I have no idea what changed it. So that accounts for the reason why for the most of this video you'll see render times around 40 seconds and then at this point they're down to 20. I would really love to know what I did but unfortunately I have no idea what I've changed. There are still some artifacts. You'll notice that uh, when I do use ambient occlusion the denoiser is still struggling to get a clean read on the background particularly this area um, whereas Full global illumination seems to do a better job, although there are still some smudges here or there which refuse to quit. So in conclusion, I think you get a better result using ambient occlusion passes and a clever bit of compositing than you do using fast global illumination and the add mode. Obviously replace mode is a little bit quicker. It comes with its own set of issues. And again, you're not really able to tweak as much as when you create a custom node network. For example, I can't really change the contribution of fast global illumination or in this case, ambient occlusion to the final render. And it's really nice to be able to play with that to your heart's content until you really get a great image. One thing I think could be improved is the artifacts from denoising. Taking a look at the raw image, 
it is quite a lot noisier in those areas where those artifacts are and because there's actually quite a bit of detail hidden all that noise it may just be that the denoising algorithm needs more samples of course more samples means more render time but this is a toss-up between quality and render time i think for getting the overall feel of the image what we've arrived at is not too bad it's just then a case of how many more samples do we need to get rid of those artifacts which is probably the subject of another video so on that note feel free to subscribe because we're definitely going to look at denoising at some point and see you later